Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, a wise and forum BX257, here bringing you another 1980s G.I. Joe review, and this week on my Iron Grand Years Month, I'll be taking a look at the 1988 Destro's Elite Troopers, the Iron Grenadiers themselves. Now, the Iron Grenadiers make their first appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe in issue 69, and don't make any cartoon appearances, unfortunately. Now, some people have actually said that because the very first person to wear an Iron Grenadier's uniform was the Sergeant Major, who made his first appearance in issue number 57. Now, he was Destro's right-hand man, who kind of disappeared after a while, unfortunately. But it, it was noted that Destro actually had quite a lot of uh, guards, mostly wearing Scott's guard uniforms, and they appeared in issue 57 as well. So. Technically, you could say that those guys were sort of the prototypes for the Iron Grenadiers. The backbone of Destro's army, the Iron Grenadiers, come with three accessories. Unfortunately, 1988 and onwards seems to be the era which the, uh, the contents list of the cards aren't very detailed about what the accessories actually are. As a matter of fact, sometimes they're listed as completely wrong. Uh, case in point, the Iron Grenadier's first accessory is what the card lists as a machine gun, but is clearly a submachine gun based on the design of an Uzi. A rather nice sculpt. It does have a uh, rather fancy flash suppressor or maybe sound suppressor on the front barrel here. And this is a, a rather large Uzi as compared to what we've gotten before. I'll just take a look at uh, an Uzi that was issued with the 1985 Snake Eyes. And you can see the large, very, uh, it's almost twice its size actually. And here's an Uzi that was issued with the 1986 Low Light, as well as the 1987 Law. Again, it's rather large. The other item he comes with is just listed as a pistol. Yes, just pistol on the card. Um, I'm going to assume that this is some type of a fancy laser pistol or something. It's uh, quite sci-fi looking, unlike the other two accessories. And finally, he comes with a sword, which you can just hook onto the hook, which is molded onto his waist. I think it's rather nice that he comes with a sword, because Destro also came with a sword. So this sort of gives the, um, the Iron Grenadiers a, a, direct, uh, a direct link to the design. As a matter of fact, we can take a look at uh, Destro's sword, and you can see it is different. It still has that same uh, uh, fancy bottom end, but otherwise it's actually, uh, obviously Destro's is, would be a, a quite a bit fancier, him being the leader. But you can still see that this um, these do look like it's part of the same... Uh, design branch. Unlike Destro's sword, however, the Iron Grenadier sword is made of a more, much more flexible plastic. So while I found that the um, the chain on Destro's sword kind of broke easily, I don't find that the uh, the strap on this sword breaks very easily. Of course, <laughs> unless you um, snip it off yourself with scissors or something. One trick I've discovered is, if you want to have him holding both his sword and his Uzi, but feel you don't have any place for the pistol, you can still hook it on to the hook. Now, I'm sure that this is not engineered, and I don't recommend um, putting any force into this, because you could crack, well, either the pistol or the hook on his side. 
but it does totally fit in there. Very weakly, of course, like I said, it probably isn't uh, meant for this. But if you just sort of click it in there, just gently, it does fit. Besides the bold colors, and of course the heavy use of black as an intimidation factor, he also has a lot of padding on him, which gives the figure a bit of a bulk. Of course, I especially love this uh, swoopy, kind of old-fashioned helmet, but with the fancy sci-fi, classic sci-fi <laughs> fin on the top, kind of a Buck Rogers, Flash Gordon feel to that. You notice that he does have a uh, face covering right over his mouth, which really reminds me of the Cobra Troopers and Cobra Officers. They would have a sort of a cloth over that mouth portion. But this is heavily detailed, and in the comic books it is explained that this is a gas mask. You'll also notice that he does have a, stri a strap going around the back end of his uh, helmet, which I believe is supposed to loop into the helmet and is where these black goggles are attached. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.